You're listening to the DolphinsTalk.com Podcast Network. It's the Two Amigos Podcast with Carter and Jorge at DolphinsTalk.com. Fence to the left, fence to the right. Da, 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 da. Dude, it was Jimmy Buffett's, you know, week. Jimmy Buffett's week? Oh, because he he died? Yeah, the Dolphins dedicate the game to him. I didn't know that. Yeah. Damn. Why didn't I wear my, like, Jimmy Buffett shirt? I don't have a Jimmy Buffett shirt. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just singing, fence to the left, fence to the right. <laughs> well, welcome back to the Two Amigos. Uh, that was like a natural dry entrance. I like that. Uh, my name is Carter. And I always worry that we, uh, you know, because we're we're that Thursday slot. We drop on Thursday. We get to do our podcast on Wednesday. That we lose the mystique of the game when we talk about it on like a Wednesday or a Thursday. But I don't think we can. It's I don't think it's physically possible with this game. I think I've just been consuming uh, analysts, uh, you know, like you know, first take in in Colin Coward show, and I've just been consuming everything about the Dolphins this week because it's been like completely positive welcome to the show jorge uh thank you carter has it worn off for you has this magic worn off from a 70 point win or the magic the magic hasn't worn off i will say this since monday morning at seven o'clock that i got up i'm now focused on hating on the buffalo bills this oh yeah yeah it's built hate week front Mm -hmm. it totally is yeah yeah we're we knew, like I knew at least, I, I knew you were on the same page. We're both very focused on this. We we were better than the Broncos. We were going to beat the Broncos, and we were going to go three and zero against uh, the the Bills here. You didn't. I know you were on the podcast last week, but if you listened to it, you would have had me saying that we were going to beat the Broncos. What was your thoughts before that game? Were you predicting a, a, an easy Dolphins win? So, so in the in the Spanish uh, language podcast, I predicted a thirty four twenty one win. Okay, so uh, um, a, a so, you know, but I wasn't that far from the first half score. <laughs> I mean, just no, you know, <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> close enough, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was a great game. It was a great game. I thought, you know, I think we had a lot of fun. It was it was long overdue that we had a game like that where we could just get to the third quarter, rest some starters, you know, just let the you know the the second second team go out there and prove that we are a deep team keep scoring apparently um oh it was gosh, fun it, it was fun it was very fun so let me let me strip let me strip the onion naked i don't even know if that's a <laughs> phrase but i you know I, i'm in that type of mood after that win but let me strip the onion naked right real quick is this game you, was this the most enjoyable game in dolphins history uh yay or nay I would say nay. Nay? You have a different one? I mean, I, I assume I wasn't there, but I assume, you know, winning the Super Bowls, you know, back in seventy. Okay, that doesn't count. You know, we're a lot more fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fair. Okay, let's let me phrase this better. Games you've lived through. Uh it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. You know, it's it's hard to compare it to other games because you know the Wildcat game we were coming from, you know, at one fifteen season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh we had won we had lost the first couple of games that year. There was really nothing showing. We went to the Patriots' house that had that, you know, unbelievable like twenty-four regular season, you know, unbeaten streak, and then we unleashed mm-hmm. the wild card on their asses. Um, yeah, that's true. That's true. So that was that's fun, true. but you know, obviously, just watching the Dolphins march down the field, essentially at will during this game, um, and just watching, you know, two on the guys having fun and the conga line and whatnot. It was a lot of fun. Let's talk about in terms of tu- the the era of Tua. Okay. Yes. What is your favorite Tua led game? And honestly, it probably comes down to if I'm I don't want to be presumptuous here, Jorge. I'm sure it comes down to uh the Ravens game in this one, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So which one out of those two would you rank at t- the top? Again, tough because that one was a come from behind win. And I remember I was getting messages, you know, halfway through that game from people I know, the people that love the Dolphins, that love Tua. And they were like, okay, this is it. You know, I'm, he seriously, you know, it's it's time to give up. You know, he can't do it. And then he mm-hmm. did. Um, right. And that was a lot of fun. But, you know, I mean, scoring 70 on Sean Payton, I think it's always going to be fun. Yeah. No, I... <laughs> 
I hate that guy. You don't understand how much I hate that guy, Jorge. After he like, and I'm not even a Rogers guy, but when Rogers stood up for his old coach after that, that uh, kind of prick thing he did in the before the season where he said, "Oh, you know, the Broncos coach. What was the Broncos coach's name? Hackett. Hackett. Daniel Hackett. Hackett. Yeah. Oh, uh, Hackett's." Broncos coaching job was the worst in NFL history. And then oh, starting out 0-3 and, and and we uh, the Dolphins putting up 70 on your head. That is just embarrassing, dude. I was I mean, just uh, over the moon. You, you do know that we have a member of that staff in our staff, right? Who was, you know, fired midway through the year, who was, you know, mocked by the Denver media, uh, by Benjamin Albright, who, by the way, I will call out by name because he's a jackass. Um <laughs> Yeah, and I'm not sure if people saw my exchange with him on Twitter this week, but you know he's a jackass. I didn't. Um, he, you know he was mocked. They mocked Butch Barry throughout, and he comes here and he builds what it's looking like a hell of, a, of an offensive line, right? He oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, people were calling it the best, you know, in like ten years. Yeah, I mean th- this offensive line is played. It's the best offensive line I've seen since the Sperano years for sure. For sure, for sure. Yeah. So, well, wait, hold on. You skipped over the juicy rumor portion where you were going uh, back and forth on Twitter or something. What What was that? Yeah, so he, he basically, so Albright basically predicted Dolphins would be number four in the division this year. Four, number four, dead last in the division. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, and he said something. I was like, yeah, this is as bad as your predictions, man. Uh, but yeah. you're like, yeah, it's like, you're yeah. like in week four. Like, uh, you can say that at the end of the season. I'm like, dude, I can say it right now because your predictions sucked. Um, he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, let's see if Tua, let's see if Tua can you know stay healthy the whole season. I'm like, you can say that from any quarterback, man. Like, let's see if Mahomes stays healthy the whole year. Let's see if you know Aaron Rodgers stayed healthy the whole year. Like, you can say that from mm-hmm. any team. So that double standard about oh yeah, the Dolphins, you know. And I'm like, actually, we went to the playoffs with Tua missing, you know, whatever number of games he missed last year, mm-hmm. um, and we were close to beating the Bills with Skyler Thompson in Buffalo. So you know, you ranking the Dolphins that last in the division is just plain bullshit. Also, to be fair, I, I know everyone thinks oh. Tua might get injured again very, very soon. To be fair, that fucker gets the ball out of his hands so quick. Yeah. He gets, uh, you know, either we're handing off the ball and we're getting seven yards a carry, yeah. or he's got the ball out so quick. It's, you don't even have to block the defensive lineman because they're not going to get there. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say it's, a joke that it's in so many levels. Yeah. But, you know, Tua with his 2.6 seconds release time has really helped Cardio a lot in his love life. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how. Wait, wait how? How? How does it happen? Sure, like, you like know, you're like, dude, like, two is releasing it in two point six, honey. I'm doing it in three seconds. Not that bad. <laughs> okay, I get the joke now. Okay, and stop on the brakes. All right, absolutely, don't take shots at me. Uh, but that was funny. funny. That was funny. Yeah, it was funny. It was funny, but it was at my expense, so I don't like it. Uh, the moving on. My my point is here. It's like. I don't know what McDaniels has been doing, but like it's so beautiful that you know everyone's saying this now that Tua is perfect for the system, but even more so, the system's perfect for Tua. You know what I mean? Yeah. Look, because I think Tua it's... is not going to get injured in this system. It doesn't feel like because he's getting the ball out. We're running for eight yards a carry. I mean, this is the perfect system for him. A hundred percent. By the way, I wish our, our show wasn't video because I would love for people to see your hand movement throughout. I'm show. doing a lot of hand motions. That's yeah. true. <laughs> Um, but I will say this, I think, you know, I think it's, you know, the perfect partnership because this system relies on Tua's superpowers, right? Anticipation and accuracy. Right. And this, you know, system also gives Tua the freedom to shoot the ball at 2.6 seconds or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I think it's, it's a perfect partnership and I don't think the system is building Tua and Tua is not building the system. I just think it's a perfect partnership and it works great together. And I'm so happy Mike McDaniel is here. Oh my gosh, I am. Yeah, the the big memes about like you just the your your ex ball boy put set yeah. me up on your head. I like those memes. I think they're funny. All right, and I uh, whatever it is. Here's my question. This has kind of been tossed around in the media too. There's sort of a my dad even sent me an article about this, and I want to hear your uh your opinion, Jorge. Uh, what's what do you think the ethics are of scoring seventy? points on an opponent though i mean like we were beating them by like 30 most of the game they weren't going to beat us they weren't going to come back there was no chance they win that game what are the ethics 
of scoring 70 on a, on an opponent. So look, the Dolphins pulled their starters, right? Wait, they did. The they border, did. Right. Um, they were playing backups yeah. and does Denver, Denver kept their starters in the game for some weird reason. They did. Uh, yeah, they did. And you know, the Dolphins were not trying to score. I mean, Outside of that 50-yard pass to Chosen, by the way, Cedric Wilson was absolutely free on the other side as well. Um, Everyone was open that whole game. You know, I, I just, I don't think the Dolphins were trying to embarrass the team, the, the Denver Broncos. I think it's just the byproduct of the Dolphins playing very well and the Bronco play, and the Broncos just quitting midway through the you know second quarter or whatever it was. Um, and I think I'm going to put this out there. I completely agree with McDaniel's calls not to go for the record. And and you know me, Carter. You know I'm a big you know romantic guy when yeah. it comes to football and the Dolphins. But I I do believe this this franchise was built by Don Shula, and we have mm-hmm. his values ingrained in the essence of this franchise. And Shula wouldn't have gone for the record. He would have you know done what McDaniel did. So I, I was very proud that McDaniel did that. Okay, well I, I'll have some counterpoints here. I mean, like you're scoring seventy. What's seventy three? Right. I I will say that like you're scoring seventy on their heads. Why not seventy three? And the second thing is. When you when you're saying like, oh, we weren't trying to embarrass them, why take a deep shot with our backup quarterback? <laughs> why take a deep shot? Like, we didn't need an 80 yard touchdown from Chosen Anderson. We just didn't at that point of the game, especially with our backups in. We were trying to embarrass them a little bit. I don't think they were trying to embarrass them. I think like you know you've got a a number of plays and you're like, okay, let's try this out. Let's see if it works right now. And it did like even the fourth yeah. quarter, right? I mean, the, the fourth yeah. quarter play, you're like, why are you trying this? Like, dude, this is the safest environment that you can try. That's like a kid, you know, drinking with his parents. Like, why are you letting him drink? Like, this is the safest environment for him to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess, I guess. I think we were trying to embarrass him a little bit. But, you know, what I will say is that this is kind of that throw in particular is a reason that I like the Ravens game a little bit more than the 70 point game. The boat race we did on the Broncos for this reason specifically is that I am so centered on Tua. I'm very Tua centric. When we win, I want it to be because of Tua. I I, I know I want to win overall, but I want to win because of Tua more than anything else. And when it comes to that throw that Mike White made to chosen Anderson, I kind of proved to me a little bit that it didn't matter who was at quarterback that 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 day. We ran for like 400 yards on that. It yeah. didn't matter who was at quarterback. We were the Broncos might just have one of the worst defenses of all time. I mean, yeah. it, it's it's more about the Broncos defense than it was about us. I felt like. I feel like the Denver Broncos were you know bad. Um, I think we also you're, we're very good at offense. No, for sure. We're um, very good. And, and, and I think, you know, that that first pass, there's no way, for example, uh, Mike White, I think, makes that pass to Tyreek because just to a misdirecting everyone with his eyes. That's just elite from him, by the way. No, that's true. That's true. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, uh, I mean, to be honest, Scott, I think if you or I had been the quarterback from the third quarter onwards, <laughs> we win changed, that game. Would have, yeah, would have changed a single thing. <laughs> You know, if uh, yeah, but if you're not your starting quarterback, you know, first quarter we're losing that game. That I don't, I honestly don't know. I I really think that that Broncos specific team. I think Sertain is fast, but he's obviously not even fast enough to keep up with uh, Chosen Anderson, right? He's. I think that defense is just always running in quicksand. They felt like they were the slowest team I've ever seen in my life, and. That was a huge reason. I think the matchup's really bad. The Dolphins versus that ter- terribly uh, quicksand defense of the Broncos. Uh, but when it co- like honestly, if we just ran the ball the entire game, they wouldn't have stopped it. They wouldn't have stopped it. And that's the only reason that I say the Ravens game's a little bit cuter in my heart because the Ravens game was all Tua. It was six touchdowns. It was it was beautiful. And uh, I guess that's just my opinion. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, yeah. I, I I see your point. I see your point. Uh, okay, that's my only thing. Moving on, going forward. Are we moving uh, there, on to the Bills week? No, there was one more. Th- well, almost moving on to the Bills week. <laughs> <laughs> I had one more thing to say before we moved on to the Bills week. And I took a photo of it because everyone's been posting it all over the place. But it was, it's basically the coincidence of Tua's numbers 
three weeks through three weeks through the season last season between now. So last season, after three games, we were three and oh, Tua was 72 for 101, eight touchdowns to two picks. This season, he is three and oh, 71 for 101, and eight touchdowns to two picks. Exactly the same numbers. I know the passing numbers, the the yardage is a little higher. But everything else, exactly the same. Isn't that kind of wild? It is. I also think... I, I've seen that going around. Um, I also think it's worth less. And you think tell it's you worthless why. or worth yeah. less? No, worth less. Okay. And then I'm going to tell you why. First of all, we know how quickly a season can change, right? True, true. Um, last year, you know, we did it, you know, barely beating the Patriots at home, then have that hell of a win in Baltimore, and then beating the Bills... You know, when well, they had like 80% of the time of possession, right? Right. So, yeah, same numbers, but you cannot tell me the feeling is the same. Like this year, the, the, the offense has been dominant. I don't think there's been a single game, you know, where you're like, damn it, this offense is in trouble. Like we can't get anything going. You know, even the Patriots that played a hell of a, def- a game on defense, you knew we were going to get points, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. That wasn't the case last year. The feeling is different. I the give you that. The feeling is different. Also, by the way, last year we did it playing two games at home. This year has been two games away. Right. Um. So, I, I, I mean, it, it's nice. I mean, MVP, I think we know Tua can play at an MVP level. And last year, you know, the injuries prevented him from getting that MVP. I'm just going to say, I think this is the, that's base Tua, basically. That's right. base Tua. Okay, well... Let's strip this onion naked real quick. I, I, I got to stop saying that. I, I was seeing if I could get away with it one more time. Oh my God. I, I need to say this, Jorge. I'm a little bit afraid that it's similar to last year. We have the same numbers. And also, we were 3-0. and Okay, the last two years with McDaniel. Uh, the last two years with McDaniel, we've had a really great start. And then we've sucked. What? This is our second year with McDaniel. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's not... That, that's, Wait, did we have a great? But we did have with Flores his last year. We had a do not speak that man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The last two years, though, we've had great starts and awful finishes to the year, right? Yeah. And we really haven't proven the question marks. Aren't are we good in the beginning of the year and can we string together wins? The question marks are: Can Tua stay healthy? Are are the teams in the NFL going to figure us out defensively? And can we play in cold weather? Those are the things we need to figure out. Okay. And we haven't figured out any of those yet. I disagree. Fair? I disagree. Okay. H- how so? First of all, last year you went to the playoffs, you know, with a very, very injured team. And yes, you got that true. last win in the last week. You went to Buffalo with your starters and you played a hell of a game, proving that you can play in cold weather. You know, they won because they had the last possession. That's it. Mm-hmm. You went to the playoffs with your quarterback three once again in cold weather and you played a hell of a game. This team's not, We're not playing horseshoes, cold. though. We're not yeah, playing but this horseshoes. team is not. This team is not scared of the cold. Second, mm-hmm. um, this year you're not facing a huge number of cold, of cold games, right? We're playing Buffalo away in Week Four. We've played uh, the New England away. We've played, mm-hmm. you know, New York in Black Friday. You know, we're playing Kansas City in Germany, whatever that is. That's true. You know, we're not playing a, a huge number of cold games right and this team has proven they can go away from home and win yeah uh, right? I mean, so that, that's fair and you know the offense keeps evolving well name one of the games that you we won we won in cold weather that you have said will prove that we can play there in cold weather. i think i don't th- for, I, I don't think you have to win to prove you can play i think going to buffalo in Monday night or whatever it was last year, you know, getting pelted by snowballs and the team being like two points away from winning. You know, we weren't dominated. It wasn't like we were out of the game at any point. You know, we That's were fair. one possession. You know, we if we had the last possession, we win that game. I'm convinced yeah. of it. Is that the game where Josh Allen had that that awful incompletion that everyone makes in, into a meme? I think so, yeah. The one where he kind of like, he falls down, he throws the ball at the ground. I don't know. Yeah. I think that was the game. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And that so, was so, a really fun game, too. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, th- I think I'm not worried about playing cold weather. I'm worried if, if we if, if we don't win the number one seed, you're playing cold weather in Kansas City. 
sure. Mm-hmm. So, well, we we should just win the one seed then. We should just that's win the one saying. seed. So we have, have, you, have you seen any, have you seen anything from this team that tells you like, oh no, there's no way we're winning the one seed. <clears throat> well, it, I don't think it's ever that. Like, the, I think the huge turning point last season wasn't necessarily that everyone figured us out. I think towards the end of the season there was a little bit of that with the Chargers and the Niners, but. When it comes to, like, it was just the the health of Tua really that threw us off in the beginning of the year after our win streak to three and zero. So honestly, if Tua does stay healthy, this season should look like it does look like a one seed coming out of it. I would agree with that. Right, and here's another thing: like last year, we didn't have a running game. That's true. That's one of the things that's way different about this year. That's true. Yeah. Like this year, like I know that if they shut down the air attack, there's a running game to scare the shit out of you. Dude, I think it, like, especially against the Broncos, I think they could probably, like, honestly, the thing they couldn't stop was we get seven or eight a carry. That was, if you can get seven or eight or eight a carry every game, yeah. uh, we are the most dangerous team, not only in the NFL. Uh, if if we're run, if we, we can if we have Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle clicking, and then we have that running game going for seven or eight, we're one of the best offenses in the history of the game. I honestly I believe agree. that. If, I, I agree. I agree. I'm, I'm I'm with you there. You agree? Yeah. Yes. So I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll we'll hit the breaks. I have another uh another segment for us real quick before okay. we head into Bills Week stuff. Uh, right now I'm on CBS.com, NFL.com for power rankings wise had us at number one, but CBS yeah. has us at number four. We're going to look at the three teams it has ahead of us. You tell us if you think we're better than them or we would beat them in a matchup right now on a neutral field. Okay. okay? So who do you think's ahead of them? K- take guesses first. Who do you think's ahead of the Dolphins? I think it's going to be Eagles, Niners, yes. and yes. the Chiefs. Yes, it, that is exactly the three teams. Good job. Let's start at number three and you tell me what you think. Uh, everyone's healthy, neutral field against the Chiefs. Uh, I think we win. You think we win? I do. What do you think that score looks like? Neutral field, right? Neutral field. I say it's like 44, 42 to 41 to 38, whatever. So just like close as shit, you're saying? Yeah. I, I think... Whatever we play, it's whether it's Miami, Kansas City, or you know neutral field, it's going to be close as shit. Yeah, that's fair. And honestly, we are playing the Chiefs at a neutral field in Germany, so uh, th- we're going that's to be able to be see a half a game. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. What is that like week nine or something? Yeah, something like that. Whatever it was, I was going to go to that game, uh, but of course they took it away from me. All right, so we're run. Oh, we might be running out of time. Okay, let's just do this quickly. Eagles. Uh, I think that's going to be a hell of a game, by the way. The Eagles, I mean, this definitely. So I'm going to say, I think we beat the Eagles. Neutral field. You think we beat the Eagles? Okay. Yes, sir. Now, yeah, honestly, I think the reason I would agree with you is that the Eagles are very depleted defensively, especially secondary. I just don't think they match up with our wide receivers. And I have a different reason. You have a different reason. What do you think? Yeah. I think the I think the Eagles rely on their running game, and if mm-hmm. we get ahead of them, they can't rely on that running game anymore. That's true. That is honestly true. That they they are very reliant on that running game, and then taking like deep shots to Devonta Smith like every seventh play. Yeah. the The thing I'll the, the one thing I'll say is if they if they don't if the NFL doesn't make that stupid uh, quarterback sneak shit illegal very soon i'm gonna be at my wits end because i hate watching that go in every time like there is nothing to stop that and hopefully they make that illegal soon is the only thing i'm saying Uh, here's my thing i think it's a rugby play right so why don't you defend like a rugby play what do you mean like so that's called a rock in rugby sure so just you know that there's a defensive team in the rock that pushes the rock back yeah yeah so i think you know okay so, you know, you fake rugby the way back, you know, just defend it like rugby does. And so you're going to push 
you you have two people pushing a defender into them. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> like if they want to do a scrum. Let's do a scrum, man. Okay. I kind of like that. You should send an send an email <laughs> into Vangio. Uh, it's not bad. Okay, last one. Niners. Do we beat them? Neutral field. I think that's the toughest one, man. And I think, yeah, definitely. Is. I'm, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say what I was going to say. I'm just going to say it's the toughest one. You are going to say we'd lose. No, I'm not, I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say there's a way we can figure that out, but that's where I'm going to leave it at. Okay. Last, last year they, they, they screwed us. They absolutely yeah. destroyed us. And yeah. <laughs> after it looked so promising with that first play of the game too. All right. So, I would agree. I honestly think we beat everyone except the Niners could be a toss up, like literally a coin flip game. All right. Yeah. So let's move on to the Bills week because we have about take me through the emotions. Take me through what you're thinking. What what do we got? What do we got, Jorge? I'm very excited about the game on Sunday. I'm not I'm not I'm not excited because I'm sure we're going to win. I'm excited because it's going to be a hell of a game. And it's yeah. like, you know, they, they are the, the reigning AFC East champions, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We have to go through them. Yeah, it's true. And I honestly feel like this team is very aware of that. And they, and Tua said it today, right? In his press conference, like I, the only way I see it is we have to go and, and beat them. You know, we have to go and beat them. When's the last time we won in Buffalo, Jorge? I have no idea. That is a good question. Let's find out. <laughs> I Dolphins... thought you were going to have the answer like right there. No, 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 no. I was hoping that you would be that guy. You're our stat guy. But all right, let's. Let's do matchups. But the one thing I will say is you're right. It's it's just about going through this team. Uh, and going through this team means beating them in Buffalo. The yeah. best part of this, uh, and I, I don't want to sound like a little baby here, but I like that we're not playing in Buffalo in January. So yeah, yeah. Uh, that's Look, another thing. I was in Buffalo in January, and let me tell you, it was fucking miserable, man. <laughs> That is, I could believe that. Okay, so here's, I'm on the screen now. It says the last time we beat them was last year, of course. Uh, yep. And that was at home. Uh, yep. the, the, the last time we won before that was at home in 2018. Yep. And we beat them 21 to 7, 17. Okay. Uh, the next time we won before that was in Buffalo. So the last time we beat them was 2016, the year after I graduated college, which was seven years ago. Yeah. We beat them 34 to 31 in overtime uh in December uh the day before Christmas. Okay. So, 7 years ago is the last time we beat Buffalo and Buffalo. What's different now? I, why don't we lose again? What 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 do you think? As I said, I think this team is keenly aware that, you know, we have to go through the Bills. And I think they're, you know, they're excited about the challenge. I think it's going to be a hell of a game. I mean, it was the last time we came into a game, you know, ranked number one by any power rankings or top five, whatever it was, you know, by all of them. Uh, I think maybe a couple of them after we beat the Bills last year, but really there wasn't a lot of them. Yeah, but now we're going to Buffalo with this team. You know, we lost to the we lost there in the regular season. We lost there again in the playoffs. They took a cheap shot at Tua, you know, with Matt Milano, dirty ass shit. Um, yep. Tell me this team, like, is not pumped for this game. Oh, they're they're definitely they're definitely pumped for this game, and we get Waddle back. And uh, honestly, the, we're kind of we're both kind of at full power going into this game. No yeah. excuses, no yeah. excuses, right? And honestly, there is no weather to be at play, so it's literally just who's the better football team, right? Yep. And the thing is, too, like I was looking at the Bills, like even though the Bills, it felt like after game one, I'm like maybe they're not going to be very good this year. They proven in the last two weeks that there's still going to be a powerhouse in the AFC East, or in the AFC because yep. they're number two in, in defense and they're number two in offense. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, or they're top five in offense, but then they're number two in defense. But still the point is they are juggernauts on both sides of the ball. And we just dropped 70 on a team. I wonder, what do you think? How does this game play out? I think, First of all, you know, we haven't faced a defense like Buffalo's. And yes. but then again, they haven't faced an offense like ours. And I know that I think they're keenly aware that they almost lost to us against a third string quarterback, you know, in the cold, you know, with a really bad defense, you know, going into that game in the playoffs that, you know, really came to life after, you know, giving up some early scores. 
Um, and now we're going there with a healthy Tehran, with you know a healthy Tua, with a running game that just basically ran all over the Broncos, and with a team very keenly aware that they have to go through them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, the it's it's the Dolphins have nothing to lose. Like, hey, we lost at Buffalo. Like, that's not the end of the season. The Buffaloes, the Buffalo Bills, lose at home against the Dolphins. Shit, man. I mean, you don't you don't fault that team. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, if we lose against the Bills and we put up a fight, I don't think you're gonna fault us as like, oh, we're dropping them to 15. I knew they were fakers, you know. Yeah, no, no, uh, no, absolutely, no, no. But my point is, if you are the Bills mm-hmm. and you lose to the Dolphins at home, oh. now the season, like the season becomes a whole different thing because now you're two games behind in the division. Yep. And you're not, and you've already lost, you know, against two divisional foes, one of them at home. And one of them at home. So if we, when we play them again, we'll be back in Miami. So that's, yeah. what do you think? Give me your prediction then. Give me your score prediction here. I'm going to say Dolphins are going to put a 40 burger, 42. Ooh. And I think the Bills are going to respond somewhat and it's going to be a 42 24 game. You, we think, you think we're going to just decimate them. I think the Dolphins have something to prove in this game, and if if they lose, it's not the end of the world. But I, I'm really excited to watch them play on Sunday. I'm pumped as well. This is the first time that I felt like the Dolphins could beat anyone in the NFL. They have a chance yeah. of beating anyone in the NFL. This when you're putting up th- this uh, this many points, it doesn't really matter how your defense is, and our defense isn't shit either. So it's like yeah. I'm in. I'm in here. If we boat race the Bills, we boat race the NFL. That's how yeah. it's going to work. If we show up and we beat Buffalo in, in in Buffalo, the rest of the season could be like the Eagles last season where they just boat raced everybody and went to the Super Bowl. It could yeah. totally happen. Yeah. And I'm really just pumped to be a Dolphins fan. I'm thinking, I, I agree with you. I'm going 35 to 28. I think it's still pretty close. Dolphins win. That's been the show because we're, we're into our last minute. <laughs> And I don't want to do any editing. It's a great so, show, man. So, yeah, it's going to be a hell of a game. Hell of a game. Hell of a season so far. Thanks, Jorge. This has been The Two Amigos. We'll see you next week. See ya.